Hi, I'm Ron Hawk. You can make a plane like this one from one of our plane kits. It's easy and I'll show you how. First, gather all the parts together into something resembling a plane. Notice that the top rear corner of the sides and the rear block is identified with a chamfer. The location of the cross pin holes in the sides is referenced from the rear so everything lines up from here. Apply clamps loosely and adjust the mouth opening using the blade as a gauge to set the 3 16 inch gap. If you slip the blade into place, it should hit the front block about a sixteenth of an inch up from the bottom. This allows for accurate mouth adjustment later. Tap the parts into alignment. Flush at the back and all along the bottom. It's important to get this right now and much easier than it is to correct for misalignment later. Tighten the clamps and drill four quarter inch holes on each side for the dowels that will align the parts during glue up. I install the dowels as I drill so nothing can shift after I've drilled the hole. Before removing the clamps, mark the inside of the sides so you'll know where not to apply glue. Apply the glue using quarter inch dowels to keep everything in place and clamp it up. I'll sharpen the blade while I let the glue dry. A sharp edge is one where two surfaces, in this case the flat back and bevel of the blade, meet at an intersection with zero radius, or as close to zero radius as we can achieve. A blade dulls as its cutting edge radius gets larger and larger, or, if you will, rounder and rounder. So if this makes sharpening seem easy, well, in theory it is. Simply abrade the two intersecting surfaces of your blade with finer and finer grits until the two surfaces meet with zero radius all along the edge. Use any abrasive method that you may have or prefer and there are many available. Just remember the goal of zero radius and work toward that. Today I'm using honing film on glass for my abrasive and for flattening the back I've added a thin strip of plastic to lift the rear of the blade. You can use a stainless steel ruler as well, this is known as the ruler trick. This way, instead of flattening and polishing the whole back, I can work on just the quarter inch or so back from the cutting edge. This is 80 micron honing film and it cuts through the grinding on the back very quickly. Just a few strokes and it's ready for a finer grit. I've got 15 micron on the other side. You can tell when you're done with a grit if you've raised a burr. It may be hard to see, but you can feel it with a fingernail. If there isn't a burr, you haven't reached zero radius yet. You haven't gone far enough with that grit. Repeat this procedure with finer grits. I'm using 5 micron and 1 micron for a finely polished edge.
That's plenty sharp. Set the cap iron about a 32nd to a 16th of an inch from the edge. Okay, the glue's dry, the blade's sharp. Let's turn this into a plane. Use a chisel or saw to flush cut the dowels. Clean any glue squeeze out from the throat. Glue in the cross pin. Apply glue in one of the holes and on the opposite end of the cross pin and tap it into place. Clean up any excess glue. Now flatten the sole of the plane. Install the blade fully tensioned, but back it up out of the way or you'll grind off that nice edge you just honed. I'm using 100 grit sandpaper here. Or you can use a plane. Just go carefully and slowly. It's easy to take off too much and a lot harder to put it back on. When the sole is flat, if the blade still isn't protruding, use a file to carefully open the mouth just enough to allow the blade to cut. Check often with the blade to see if the mouth is open enough, but not too much, just enough for the shaving to pass through. Adjusting one of these planes calls for a small hammer. Tapping the blade increases the depth of cut while striking the rear of the plane will retract the blade for a finer cut and a thinner shaving. Lateral adjustments are done by simply tapping the blade on one side or the other. I rest my finger on the blade so I have a sense of how much I'm moving it while making adjustments. How hard you have to hit it depends on how hard you drove the wedge in in the first place. When you have the blade set for a good shaving, take a good look at the blade under a bright light so you can reset it to the same place next time. There we go. So there you go, just like that. Shaping the plane is entirely up to you. I usually take them over to the bandsaw and trim off the dowels that are exposed fore and aft. I like to shorten the plane a bit also so that I have better access to the blade for adjustment. Uh, like on this plane here, the blade sticks up a bit farther out of the body of the plane. Other than that, it's a matter of, uh, of comfort and aesthetic appeal, and it's your plane, so shape it the way you like it. Thanks for watching. I'm Ron Hawk.